Next up, we have a couple of questions from FC Byron who asks, mm -hmm. are admission tests easy or hard if you have good, great grades? Personally, I, when I took the admission test, um, it was really, it wasn't really that hard if you have studied for it. But having said that, mm. uh, it doesn't really matter what grades you had from your Norwegian high school, because yeah. as I already mentioned, the things or the questions that you get on your entrance exam are sort of medical related. So you have to study for that exam um, specifically and, you know, just go through the exam, the, the, the curriculum that they have mm. published on their website. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, it doesn't really matter if you have good grades in chemistry, um, from high school because mm -hmm. the curriculum is entirely different. Yeah, exactly. And then he asks, are grades relevant? There has to be some kind of threshold. Mm, grades are not that relevant. I think the only thing that you need is like at least 60% from your high school mm. in all the subjects that, that are required to get okay. uh, into the medicine. Mm -hmm. But again, that comes to the, you know, back to my point that you have to check mm. each university's admissions criteria mm. on their website. Yeah. For example, when it comes to Lublin, my university, Simply, you need 60%, minimum 60% to even take the entrance exam. Okay. Yeah, mm. so that's pretty much it. All right. And also, entrance exam is not obligatory for everyone, at least in my university, university for now. I think if you have, let's say, 90% grades, like for example, if you're applying from Norway and you have mm. fives and six, maybe you don't even need an entrance exam. Maybe you can just okay. simply get in, right? But that changes also every year. Okay, so, so they keep would, changing the rules. Yeah, mm. so it's pretty much different every year. So... Simply again, check the website, that's it. Next, we have quite a few questions from Tara Farnosh. Mm -hmm. And she's asking firstly, do you think it would be way different studying medicine in Norway? Yeah, if you take the comparison, I think, um, as I've heard, uh, for example, in Poland, mm. every, most of the classes, let's say lectures and labs are obligatory. Okay. I don't think you have that in Norway, like the lectures. Uh, no, no lectures actually in Norway yeah. are obligatory. You can choose to attend lectures. Or you can exactly. Choose to drop lectures, uh, at yeah. least in Poland, when it comes to anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, like the subjects, preclinical subjects that you have in first three mm. years, most of the lectures are obligatory. Okay. So you have to attend them. Also, you do have a lot of weekly tests. Mm. and quizzes mm. we don't have that here in norway uh, yeah. we only have our exams like at the end of the semester yeah exactly or at the end of the year yeah so we mm. at least in lublin you do have some qualifying quizzes and tests that you have to pass okay in order to take the semester test oh, right. at the end of the semester okay so yeah that's it uh, i don't know honestly how the mm. like i think compare like when it comes to subjects and mm. books it's pretty much the same there's no mm. difference the only thing maybe that's different is like how the structure of built, the yeah, yeah the, how the whole structure has been mm. like the quizzes and the test and the exams mm. and which subjects you have in your first year and second year yeah. for example we have almost no anatomy or physiology in our first year yeah uh, whereas in other universities i think they study physiology and yeah. anatomy already in the first year exactly so yeah I'm, also we have for example anatomy in poland it's uh, mostly written and you have oral we right? have an oral anatomy exam so yeah. that's pretty much it but it's almost the same Okay, and then she asks, um, how was or how are the professors? Uh, okay, that's a good question. Uh, I think uh, mm. different people will answer, answer that differently, but yeah. <laughs> but for example, when it comes to my university, I personally haven't be faced, okay, let's be transparent, I mm. haven't faced any kind of discrimination or racism. Okay. Uh, most of the prof professors are really friendly, mm. uh, speak good English. Mm, yeah helpful and you know helpful yeah some of them can be lazy honestly uh, <laughs> it depends yeah. on but i think uh, you have sir. that those sort of professors everywhere not just in poland yes. so i think it really varies greatly yeah so i think it's it's pretty much the same yeah okay and then she asked was it difficult going back and forth to norway uh it's not that difficult to be honest uh, because uh most uh okay we have direct flights um to almost every city to mm. po in poland, in poland okay. uh, for example i'm studying in lublin and i have a direct flight from Oslo, mm. uh, it takes about an hour and a half from oslo to get to the airport and then a two-hour flight mm. so in six hours i'm at home mm. and uh, i think sorry um i think when you are traveling so much like every yeah you, you get you used, get used to, it. to it yeah you get really yeah. used to it yeah. it's not difficult at all oh. trust me mm. Okay, and then she's asking, uh, what was a normal day like to you in Poland? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, I think in the beginning you have a lot of a lot of a lot of classes, especially when I had anatomy. I had to wake up like five or six in the morning because okay. I, we had classes oh. because we have uh, in the beginning in the first year you have um, anatomy labs twice 
a week. Mm. That's from like I I remember like it's six years ago. Okay. <laughs> it's like from seven to eleven mm. uh, or seven to ten. I don't remember that much. Yeah. Mm. But um, it's it's not it's not that easy to be honest. Mm. You have a lot of hours at school. Like mm. you have to be physically present mm. at the school. Okay. Uh, the next question by her is: uh, Did you work in Norway in your summer breaks? Yes, I did that, and also it's really, really important uh, to get mm. a job, a, a summer job, and in the health sector, not a, like a job at a grocery store. Mm. You have to build your CV, mm. and you have to start applying already. But let's say when you get in admission, right? Mm. So you can use that admission letter for applying mm. the jobs. Mm. So I did work at in the health sectors. I I worked at the uh, do you say elderly house or yeah like an old home old homes yeah mm. uh, with the old patients I started mm. with that then I worked also I have worked at the hospital mm. at uh, Legevakt okay. the the like uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't know, know what like, what, well yeah it's more like, a like emergency emergency yeah, emergency war department yeah. I don't know yeah so I have worked pretty much everywhere mm. But you have to, you have to be a warrior. Trust me, you have to, <laughs> you have to mm. keep applying. Don't mm. lose hope. Just keep applying. It's really yeah. hard because it's a lot of competition. There are a lot of medical students who are, who are applying, applying for the same yeah. job. Mm. But don't lose hope. Yeah, and I think that pretty much applies to Norwegian students as yes. well. We also have to build our CVs now, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, really work in the summer or in our Easter break or yeah. basically any holidays. I mean, I work every week, um, and that's like the, the 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 perk of studying medicine in Norway that I yeah. don't have to wait for my Easter break or for my summer breaks. Mm -hmm. I can work like every week or whenever I want to. Yeah. So I think that's a really good advantage or, or big that's advantage. Not, I think that's the only plus point of studying in Norway. Yeah. Other than that, when you're applying for Tunis or residency mm. in Norway, they, they don't pretty much see uh, mm. where you, you have studied from. Yeah. And then she's asking, how mm. are the living expenses? And I think we already have answered that. Yeah. Uh, and then the next question by her is, was it hard studying in a different language? Mm, personally, I don't think. I don't think so. Okay. And I don't think so. it was hard for any of my classmates who are Norwegians. Mm. So... But are are the lectures in English or are they everything like, mm. everything from A to Z is in English? So do you have to learn Polish? No, no. we do have a Polish subject, but <laughs> okay. that's just a formality that you have. But uh, how do you sorry? How do you communicate with patients? For example, uh, you have always uh, your teacher with you, okay. and uh, th that teacher is always translating everything that the patient is like the whole uh, talking or communication thing. The, po that, the history that patient is telling you, mm. the teacher will translate everything to okay. in English. Okay. So you don't find it hard? Yeah. I mean, yeah, starting I in English. I think the, mo um, the only, maybe the only, how, how, how should I say, the only challenge that you mm. would face is that when you come back to Norway. So, for example, we do have some medical terminologies mm. that are completely different that you can't even imagine. Oh, that would be that mm. in, in Nor Norwegian, right? Mm -hmm. For example, we have uh, <laughs> I have mentioned that in previous video as well that kidney failure is called nidesvikt mm. in Norwegian. So that's like when you when you listen to that, it's like two different terms. sounds or yeah. two different terms. Okay, but you get used to it. Trust me, yeah, yeah, you get that used comes to with it. experience. Yes. So. Hmm. All right. Next, we have quite a few questions which we already have answered. And for example, uh, Fadumi Muhammad she asks, "How much is it costing when you live in Poland?" Mm -hmm. Already answered in the financial part. Check that out. And then she's asking, "How many times?" And then we have a next. We have a question by Aisha Nawaz. She's asking, "How many times can you travel back home to meet family?" Already yeah. answered as well. Uh, next up, we have a question by Manoj Stark who asks, "Oh, what's the what's the GPA requirement?" Already answered as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, next up we have do you pay do you have to pay for school there answered and then we have a question by Karolina Ladvik she's asking is it hard to get authorization to become a doctor in Norway if you study in Poland I think that's a very good question yeah that's a good question I don't know there is no such requirement to get no. authorization in Norway okay I think um, uh, I'm graduating like hopefully I'm graduating in two sorry three months hmm. and I haven't uh, I haven't gone into that uh, to, through that procedure of uh, you know the papers and diplomas and all that documentation mm. when mm. you for example when you are moving back to Norway mm. but as I've heard it's not that hard at all okay so it's just a paperwork that's it mm. simple all right and then she there we have a question by um, Alishpa Majid and mm -hmm. she's asking is it unsafe for girls okay <laughs> no you do have a lot of um, for example I do Okay, when it comes to some Muslim girls, right, who use hijab, right? Yeah. Because Poland 
is quite, I would say, notorious for its racism. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's... Uh, <laughs> I personally haven't faced, faced any kind of racism, to be honest. Because But do you know any girls who have experienced no, stuff? No, But I, I do have some classmates who wear hijab or, uh, in general, you know, mm. girls. Uh, I don't think it's unsafe mm. for girls at all. Mm. Uh, I personally think it's it's pretty much, yeah, it's it's really nice, you know. It's <laughs> as as long as okay, I would say for example, I I don't suggest you to go out late at night, mm. not only for girls, for the boys as well, uh, because. Um, some incidents ha have happened in the past okay uh, with the foreign students or in general with the foreigners hmm. but majority of the polish people are really nice and friendly hmm. i would say well, you, uh, we wouldn't call it unsafe no girls, no not no. not yeah. at all because uh, students have been there for many years hmm. so now polish people they are used to have students okay, okay. next up we have a pretty common question that mm -hmm. like everybody asks <laughs> and uh, that is by emilia dufset and she's asking Um, er det er det så vanskelig at få lige en som student fra Øst Europa sammenlignet med Norge som rigtig siger? Mm. That means is it really hard or difficult to get residency in Norway if you have studied outside of Norway, like in in an Eastern European country, for example, Poland? No, I think it all it all comes down to the, like you you need to have uh, you need to have a lot of experience mm. uh, during your medical studies. Uh, work experience, some, yeah, work yeah. experience, mm. like where where you have worked. I would suggest like. Mm, I think starting at the hospital would be really great if you hmm. if you get the chance to get into a hospital. Mm -hmm. Like of course you would start like with the simple jobs like me me help or uh, mm -hmm. play you, you know mm -hmm. uh, like the common tasks. But uh, you can all, of course like build up your way up to the like even nurse uh, after completing the fourth year. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then in fifth year of course you you can work as a medical student with temporary mm -hmm. medical mm -hmm. license, right? Mm -hmm. So all these factors are really important. Uh, that's I would say that's uh, that's a disadvantage of studying in Poland or in generally out of Norway that you mm. don't have that many opportunities to work. Mm. The only time that you have is summer mm. uh, or Christmas or you mm. know Easter and semester break. Mm. So, but uh, it's it's not that difficult, you know. I would say it's. It's pretty much like equally difficult for the Norwegian students yeah. who are studying in Norway. Mm. So the competition is there. Mm. So it all comes down to your CV basically. That's like yeah. the main thing that they look after or look for. Yes. When you're applying for residency or house job in mm. Norway. And then we have a few questions which again already have answered. Usman Khalid asks, what is the GPA requirement? Answered. The next we have two anonymous questions. Uh, firstly, do you, um, we do some medicine. Or like basically comparing the medicine in Norway versus Poland, already answered as well. Mm -hmm. And then we have about the loan, how much loan do you have to take from the loan kasse if you're studying medicine in Poland? Yeah. We have answered that as well. Mm -hmm. Now we have a question by Osman Khalid and he asking, he's asking, um, do you recommend studying medicine in Poland? Uh, <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> okay. All right. I would say uh, have Poland as a backup plan. As a backup plan. Yeah. Okay. Don't you, you? I I personally know that there are many Norwegian students who just think, okay, I have mm -hmm. I have the uh, option of studying medicine in Poland. Okay, why should I struggle for getting good yeah, grades so in Norway? Right? Don't bother working hard yeah. in high school. I so think that's try, uh, yeah. Yeah. Try to uh, get into Oslo or in Norway if you're from Norway or if mm -hmm. you're from any other country. Mm -hmm. Then have Poland as a backup plan. Agreed. Next up, we have a question from Rabia Said, and she's asking, I'm from Pakistan. Mm -hmm. I want to know what are the requirements for work in Poland? I think he's talking about work as a doctor in Poland, probably. If she means that she's uh, try, she's uh, with, uh, she she wants to move from Pakistan to Poland, mm. I think the only requirement... Uh, okay, I'm not sure, to be honest, because I don't know how the procedure works. Like the immigration of, stuff and all that. Yeah, yeah, of getting her diploma approved in Poland. Mm. I personally think that she has to take, if she's from Pakistan, which is a non-European country, right? Mm. Uh, I personally think she has to take the language, of course, the language test, the Polish exam, and also the the medical test, you know, the medical exam. Yeah, okay. Mm. And uh, if she can clear that exam, then she should be qualified to work yes. as a doctor yeah, you know, exactly. in, in Poland. Yeah. All right. The last question is by Subhan Sohail, and he's asking... Is it easy to eat and find halal food there in Poland? Mm -hmm. I think it depends on where, which city you are f studying in. For okay. example, in Warsaw, there are tons of halal restaurants. Um, uh, also, halal butchers. Uh, mm. Like, uh, yeah, getting like raw meat from uh, those shops is not that difficult. But for example, if I'm from Lublin, right? I uh, used to buy uh, meat from Warsaw, which is the capital. So it mm -hmm. takes from uh, takes like 
two to three hours uh, um, drive from Lublin to Warsaw. Mm -hmm. So also, I think they have the home delivery option. So you can just even call them and... Uh, <laughs> quite convenient. <laughs> yeah, quite convenient because, uh, you know, the Poland doesn't have a lot of Muslims. The, whole, mm. the Muslim population is like 0.1% in the whole okay. Poland. Mm. So like a small minority. So yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Shouldn't be that hard to find a lot of food. Shouldn't be that hard, but of course, I think, check the rules. Uh, because I think even from Norway, you can uh, take raw halal meat from Norway and you can travel with that. Like frozen like, meat. Yeah, yeah, like the frozen yeah. one. Uh, but it's only for the personal consumption. Uh, mm. But uh, I would suggest that you check the rules and regulations when it comes to that. Like mm. with the borders and import and, you know, the, the taxes and the customs and all that. All right. So mm. be careful with that. Other than that, it's... Yeah, I think I have answered the question. Yeah. All right, that's a wrap for today, Sapiens. I hope you found the video useful. And Hassan, thank you for being here and taking the time out to no, answer all these questions. No worries at all. I'm happy to help. Yeah, all right. So I hope you found you guys found the video useful. And if you haven't checked out these videos, then maybe you should do that because they will surely add some value to you guys. Mm. So thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next video. Take care. Peace.